my name is Ron Watkins and I'm a shark ambassador with Sharks for Kids. And uh, today we have Andre Musgrove on for Shark Talk. Hi, Andre. How you doing? Hey, Ron. I'm doing great. Good. You can uh, see me okay and hear me fine? Yep. Loud and clear and visually clear too. Excellent. Um, well, for those of you who have not attended a Shark Talk or, or maybe new to Sharks for Kids, uh, we're a group of shark enthusiasts. Uh, we're all volunteers and we work with kids both in schools and other activities uh, in person and online like we are today. And we try to educate kids about uh, sharks, their important role that they play in the oceans and the world, and ways that they can get involved in shark science, uh, shark photography like we're going to be talking about today, and other things to help protect sharks worldwide. Uh, there's a lot of material on our website at sharksforkids.com, and at the end of today, if I have time, I'll actually uh, give you a little preview of the website and where some of my favorite activities and uh, information is on that website. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, kick things off with uh, Andre. If you don't mind, Andre, I'll give a little introduction, and then I'll turn things over to you. Sure. All right. Um, so I'm sure today we have a lot of kids online who would love to swim with sharks. Maybe they've swam with sharks. And a lot of kids that also maybe want to take pictures and video of sharks. And so for all of you kids out there, uh, we've got a treat for you today. Um, we have a special guest, Andre Musgrove, uh, and he's going to tell us what it's like to be a shark photographer and swim with sharks. So we're going to be talking to him about his unique style of photography, uh, a little bit about how he got started and his inspirations, uh, and he's going to show us some of his equipment that he uses as well to capture these amazing images and uh, videos that he's going to be showing today. And then he's going to also, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Bahamas and just what makes the Bahamas so special for sharks and other type of underwater photography. And then we'll talk about some pretty cool projects that he's been working on recently. Um, so Andre is an award-winning and very well-published underwater photographer and filmmaker. He's a professional free diver, a scuba diver instructor, and a private dive guide and an underwater model. Um, his work's been featured on National Geographic, Discovery Channel, GoPro, Canon, Rolex, Airbnb, and the list goes on and on. He's got a lot of accomplishments. Uh, uh, he was born and raised in the Bahamas, uh, which has some of the healthiest reefs and shipwrecks and uh, home to over 40 species of sharks. So it's a great place to be based. Um, he's also as uncomfortable in front of the camera as he is behind the camera. So we're going to get to see some not only pictures that he's taken, but pictures of him and just how comfortable he is underwater. So uh, let me just share my screen here for a second. And got a couple of slides here. Um, again, if you want to reach out to Sharks for Kids, you can reach us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and our website. Um, and then I also put Andre's information up there, and uh, we'll put this up slide up at the end as well. But you can follow him on Instagram, and he's he's got an amazing website where you can see more of his photography. Andre is somewhat of a superhero. Let me let me put it put it lightly. Um, at least I, I believe he is, and a lot of other people believe he is. Uh, you may have seen him recently on the Discovery Channel Shark Week um, episode, Adam Devine Shark Lair. And on this episode, he showcased some of his superhero superpowers. And Adam, this is actually a quote that he said when he was underwater and saw Andre gliding through the water effortlessly. He looks like a superhero, and he really does. Uh, he truly looks like a superhero. And Andre specializes in free diving, which means that he has the superpower to stay underwater for a long time without breathing. So, you, you know, he's going to tell you a little bit more about that. And then underwater, he's weightless, so he can fly around the reefs and the shipwrecks and swim with the sharks effortlessly. So it's, it's really cool superpowers that he has. And these superpowers give him some advantages when taking photographs, uh, doing video, and we're going to talk about some of the advantages of being a free diver uh, versus scuba diver. So with that, uh, without further ado, um, I want to turn things over to you, Andre. I'll stop sharing my screen. And uh, again, just want to welcome you to uh, Sharks for Kids Shark Talk. Thanks, Ron, for that intro. I really appreciate it. And I'm happy to be here speaking with you guys and for Sharks for Kids. Great, great. 
and appreciate you making the time for us. I know you could be out your doorsteps in the water probably today if you wanted to, uh, assuming the weather's nice. So I I'm curious, how, how did you get started? I know you're from the Bahamas and, and raised, but how did you get started in, in diving and underwater photography? So I got started in diving specifically from spearfishing. So here in the Bahamas, to spearfish, you have to free dive. We can't use scuba equipment. So no BCDs, no tanks, everything has to be done on breath hold. And so I grew up spearfishing with my dad where I was about seven or eight when I was like, I first got a spear in my hand. I always used to go with my dad before when I was younger and see him and my uncle going spearfishing and seeing like we can collect our own fish, um, catching it, sparing it, bringing it back home, cleaning it, eating it. And I really thought it was super cool. And just the adventure going out on the boat and seeing like being in the Bahamas and like seeing 50 feet down, 100 feet down and like clear visibility, it really sparked my interest in diving where that was the main activity that I loved doing when I was younger. Like nothing else really stimulated my senses as much as diving like no video games no computer no tv or whatever just diving was was it for sure so i got into diving through that side so that was spearfishing along with free diving and as i got older and i was trying to figure out like what more i would like to do or what more under what activities i can do that's when i looked into getting scuba certified so i got scuba certified when i was in high school around I think 15 or 16 is when I did my open water on advanced. That's about and, the same here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then like shortly after, I think before I was 17, I did my rescue diver also. So it was, it was pretty cool. And it was a lot of fun because my school had a scuba club, which is really convenient. So um, we were able to go scuba diving sometimes on the weekends. And it was like a small group, but we were able to go together with like some of my friends and actually get scuba certified or do scuba dives on the weekend, which was super cool. And that's kind of like the basis of where I started from. Without even being underwater, I always had an interest in photography. I never saw it as like a profession thing. It was just a hobby where I always knew that I liked having a camera in hand to shoot things. So before I would even go diving, like, or before I had friends who I can go diving with, most of my friends, they don't, swim or free dive or go in the boat or anything or fish they would kind of be the more into like basketball or soccer or stuff like that full like more full time even though we were pretty young so andre, and, the, andre the so the kids in in uh, the bahamas not a lot of them dive then no oh. not at all. yeah okay. not even like not even now like the community of guys that i dive with now is limited to i probably say like less than 12 guys oh wow <laughs> that, that okay. i know personally from from my island who died and that that's developed like over time where it, it's really not it the free diving there is no free diving community here other than okay. like me and your friends basically but your, like your photography must really inspire them to want to go down and see oh, what that's what think. i hope that that's kind of like one of my my big goals so that's that's also why i picked up a camera initially so i wanted to show my friends and show the people who weren't joining me on these adventures what what i'm seeing because before i before i had a camera and i started out with little gopro hero black um gopro hero three plus black and for me that was like the most memorable christmas gift i ever remember getting because it's like opened up the whole door for everything and i was able to take that around on my adventures whether it be on the boat underwater whether it be like riding my bike um, cliff jumping, whatever crazy stuff I used to do. And I used to have it on camera to be able to share with my friends, which inspired them, a lot of them to actually try it out. And that's how I got into diving. And that's how I got into picking up the camera. And for there, I kind of just like increased and leveled up with deeper oh, dives, more certifications, bigger cameras, that kind of stuff. Great. No, that, that sounds good. So obviously your dad was a big inspiration and encouraged you to get into diving. Did you have any photographer inspirations uh, that you, that you looked at growing up? Or yeah. You? So when I was, when I was growing up, no, I, I didn't, I don't even think I knew one underwater photographer's name until I graduated high school. Wow. And it's, it's just because 
I like I don't I just wasn't focused on that yet. I didn't I didn't look at it at all as a career. I was just like I like using my GoPro and that's it. It wasn't until I graduated high school and I was thinking what should I do or what should I start as a profession as I start I started to look into who's out there who does underwater photography. Um the names I remember the most and like initially when I was starting underwater photography of whose style I really liked the most and whose work I liked the most was Eric Chang photog yes, photography. Eric I really liked his, I still do, I still like his lighting and his composition, the subjects I, he's able to capture. Um, also, Elena Callis, mm -hmm. she's a photographer based in the Bahamas also from, she's from Russia. And I mean, she's like the, before, like she's, I think she's like one of the first people and still on the short list of people who actually shoot underwater here in the Bahamas. And so I would search Bahamas underwater photography and her stuff will come up all the time. And it's beautiful stuff underwater, like really aesthetic, artistic style stuff that she shoots with her daughter. And, and then I think from the, like, the beginning, it was like different photographers. Like I looked at Ken Kiefer's work also. I love how Ken Kiefer uses powerful strobes to light up like so much the subject so well and you like incorporating models with wildlife and um paul nicklin also with just the the wildlife shots and so unique and capturing them in like unique like unique ways where you just that just takes time to be in the right place at the right time obviously with yeah. the skills to know how to shoot something uh, and those are like some of the inspirations i remember from my first oh, well, you've definitely developed your own unique, I'll say surreal type of photography. Uh, when I look at your images, and we're going to get to them very quickly, um, you know, just some of these images, and maybe you want to show some of them now. Um, yeah, I'm going to blow it up right now. Some of the images of, you know, free diving, because uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about free diving and, and you know, some of the advantages of free diving, um, you know, when you're, when you're taking pictures, you know, why do you free dive versus scuba dive? Mm -hmm. when uh when you want to take photos so maybe you could share your screen and, and tell us a little bit about uh free diving cool yeah so i have it open up here right and you can see it clearly uh yes so this let's see i'll start from this photo so this photo here was one of like the first photos that i've shot um kind of with the style that style that I do where this was all candid. So this was probably the first trip that I did with my friend, David Langua. He's a underwater model, free diver, shark diver, um, sailboat captain, boat captain, all that kind of stuff. And I met him about in 2016. And that's initially when I really started doing my, like my style of shooting. And so we would always go out to shoot, to shoot together and free dive together. And we were on this trip to the, one of the, the Northern islands in the Bahamas. Uh, we came across the school of eagle rays where we, we were not going to get close to these eagle rays if we were on scuba gear, like no way, because the scuba, the eagle rays are so timid. They would be not checking for us, like trying to keep their distance from us. And, it was really cool to get this photo here because this was coming down to the end of our day. And uh, we weren't like the visibility actually there was really, really bad. But because I was able to get down close enough to the eagle ray and still shoot with a wide angle lens, I was able to get this photo with David and Eagle Ray and the Eagle Ray swimming side by side. And uh, well, kind of side by side. Um, this image for me was one of the images that got recognized by the Nat Geo Your Shot um, photo competition. It's a weekly photo competition that Nat National Geographic used to have. They don't do it anymore. And where basically um, you put it up on the site and then the public would kind of like vote and choose which one is, or the editors will actually choose which one to put up and then the public would vote for whatever, which one it was oh, that week. Cool. And this is one of the images um, that I got recognized by that competition and won that week's Nat Geo Your Shot competition. So it was pretty cool seeing it like on the official National Geographic pages and stuff. And so I'm pretty happy yeah, about it's it. It's impressive, it especially that that early on uh, in, in your, your journey of photography. Yeah. It's really impressive. And the thing is this, that got, that happened about 
early last year, I believe, or maybe in 2018. And it's funny just because this is probably one of the first underwater images with the style that I do now that I've ever done. Like, like wow. literally one of the oldest ones when I go into my catalog and I organize it by date, it's like right down there in 2017. So probably, you know, growing up underwater, you always had a vision of these images. You just weren't probably taking them. And now that you have the technical equipment, you're able to capture these images, which is, yeah, it's just fantastic. So, um, yeah, these are some amazing images of uh, models. This, this is unique. You don't see this all the time. Yeah. So just like you mentioned just now, when I was younger, I'd have a vision of what I would like to do, but I never had like the knowledge or the equipment to do it. This shot here was one of those images. So the first time I went to, this shot was in um, Exuma, the Bahamas. There's a group of islands and keys in the Bahamas known for beautiful, clear waters, shallow waters. And I went back, I went to this spot first time in 2014 um, with a family trip. And we went to this spot, or I think wanted to go to this spot. I always had this vision of doing this like, really cool photo with a model sitting down there playing the piano. I, I know it's a typical thing that tourists would do when they go there, like sit in the seat, pretend like you're playing. But I, <laughs> when I shot this, I never saw it done like with anything different than a GoPro basically, or just like a normal snorkeler trying to hold their breath. I didn't see it done or executed properly. So that's something that I wanted to take up the challenge to do. And so this photo was a lot of fun to do with my friend, um, Stephanie Schultz, she's an underwater model. Um, both captain and freediver instructor and all that kind of stuff. So this is a, that shot was a lot of fun to do. Very very cool. I mean, oh, this yeah. T tell us about this shot. This one is this. Speaking of superheroes, uh, this one looks like a bunch of underwater superheroes. <laughs> yeah. So this <laughs> this image here was I think the second image of kind of like what I would consider as like my first photos I ever shot where the ones in my portfolio at least, where this image here I call Guardians of the Galaxy. But <laughs> exactly. Galaxy, Galaxy is spelled S-E-A at the end. Oh, love it. So um, it, it is superhero inspired, of course, and I just wanted the free divers, the models, to basically strike a really heroic pose. So people can interpret it differently how they want. Like one person could be Batman because they're upside down. Someone could be Spider-Man. The other person could be yeah. Captain America or whatever you want, but I was going for like the superhero heroic look of the guys posing and just having like a strong pose. And it was, this shoot was like a lot of fun to do because I was, I'm, was, and I still, I'm a big superhero comic fan. Cool. Uh, that's, that's what inspires a lot of my images, like having the free divers look really heroic in the, in the, in the pictures. So, so I hope I didn't embarrass you referring to you as a superhero. <laughs> no, man, it's, it's fine. Thank you. Oh, that's that's great. So freediving has some advantages, right, of getting close to wildlife and things like that. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. And I don't know if you have a picture of an example you could show yeah. um, of how natural it is. So I'll I'll, I'll talk while I'm showing some. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Show, show as many of them as you want. People love cool. seeing your photography. So freediving does have huge advantages over scuba diving and those images i just showed you all of those images were done yeah all of those images were done free diving so no scuba equipment was involved for me or the models so you'd be go at the surface breathing up diving down getting into position and coming back up and doing that until we actually get the shot even the, even the one with the the girl in the yellow dress oh my god so, um, free diving, you're able to get a lot closer. For, I find that you're able to get a lot closer to the marine life, especially sharks, because you don't have the distractions of bubbles, and the bubbles are loud on the water. So a lot of a lot of animals get scared by when they hear the bubbles or they see the bubbles, and they don't. It kind of prevents really natural interactions that you can have if you're free diving. But free diving, you're going down super quiet um no bubbles you're the most you're trying to do to stay quiet is not to have a like a loud descent when you're at the surface not to splash your fins all over the place but once you get on the water is you're really composed and you're really quiet and you're able to just be as natural with the animals that you're following as as anything else 
So, well, you know, yeah, that's, pictures. you know, right. that's, that's a really unique uh, way of phrasing it. You, you are, you're really one with the sharks or if you're with turtles, you're one with the turtles and you're, you're swimming with them on their terms um, and as natural as possible. So you're surrounded by environment. You know, a lot of times when you think about wildlife photography, you may be hidden in the uh, brush taking a picture of a, of a bear or on a safari vehicle taking a picture of a lion. Um, this, you're one with the ocean and you're, you're down there on their terms and uh, it's very fluid, no pun intended, but you have to go with what nature presents you. And it's amazing the images you can capture. Yes, I definitely agree. Yeah, perfect example you gave about taking a picture in the wildlife. It's similar to what um, bird photographers would do. Like if you are trying to take a photo of a, like an animal that's really skittish or hiding, you try to become like some people literally would wear a camouflage. They would be like in these over with these tarps of leaves over their head down in the forest. And they'll have like the camera with the camouflage like um sleeves over them to make it look as much as possible as they're in the forest and it's right. similar for underwater photography too where I man you can go as far as what you what you wear on the water um whether it be if you wear stuff that are blue or if you wear stuff that are green if you wear camouflage if you don't wear camouflage but more so for between the difference with scuba diving and free diving when you're more natural as like as close as possible to how the animal you're down there would be which most animals underwater well all animals that i know underwater they won't be blowing that much bubbles underwater when they're just swimming about normally and that's how you get closer interaction with them so uh, that that works um i would almost say so here's a good example of you uh, uh, scuba diving, and maybe yeah. you can explain a little bit about this, because sometimes you do need to probably scuba dive a little Correct. bit better. Yeah, so for this, this photo here was shot in Indonesia around the Komodo Islands. Uh, it's a trip I did last year on a uh, liveaboard that was amazing trip um, with a, a group of other photographers. Um, my friend Martin Sesmeyer from Germany, he shot this photo. I was there on a trip with another group called Behind the Mask. They're like this underwater production group. I think some of the best in the world. Absolutely. And I was scuba diving. This is mainly like a scuba diving trip, but scuba diving does have its advantages. I'm not going to lie. Where it's because you can stay down longer um, to observe, to, for me, to film. Um, you have more time to work a subject, so you have more time to, I guess, handle your equipment, to kind of like compose the shot for what you would like to do. You can go, usually you can go a lot deeper on scuba gear also. And also, it's still, for me, I still find it fun sometimes. Like, I still find it fun to actually scuba dive when I'm recording a subject that I couldn't do free diving, or if I'm doing something that I couldn't do free diving or not as easily free diving. So scuba diving is something I usually, I would do, the most I do for scuba diving now is for commercial jobs. So if I'm filming um, something like a, a doc, part of a documentary, if I'm on a film shoot for a commercial or something like that, I would, I would wear scuba. Um, and it's kind of like 50-50, but sometimes I wear scuba, sometimes I just free dive it. So you do, um, I mean, you, you take a lot of uh, photos with sharks, and there's so many sharks in the Bahamas. What sort of message are you trying to tell with your photos of, of sharks? So for me, my goal when I first started, when I first started shooting underwater, as I said, was to show people what's down there and what's under there. People who basically never will get to experience and that people who never did experience it. And for me, my goal has always been targeted to, like obviously targeted to the world for, for everybody to see, but more specifically to me, and this is something that has never changed, targeting the Bahamas and targeting Bahamians. Because growing up, I realized the concept and the view of sharks that basically every Bahamian has, and it's just simply completely out of fear. It's just, you're going to go to the beach, you got to be careful because sharks will be there and sharks yeah. will bite you. Like that, that's what we learned growing up. That's what we've yeah. seen on TV, where it'd be Jaws or 
um, whatever TV shows out there that kind of just like demonize sharks. And for me, I just thought when I got into diving more and I got into taking photos on the water, I was just like, everything that I learned or everything I was seeing was a lie. And I was just like, this, this isn't even fair. Cause like we're in the Bahamas and I, this is all the information I learned like over time. I was like, I'm in the Bahamas, which is basically like one of the best places in the entire world to dive with sharks, the best places in the entire world to be underwater. And there's like 85% of the behemoths don't even know how to swim. <laughs> and they've, they've never been in water deeper than that they can stand. And for me, it was just yeah. crazy. I was just like, this is, this is like mind boggling because we have this gold mine basically of resources here in the Bahamas that people can live off, whether it be commercial fishing, whether it be underwater photography, whether it be scuba diving or free diving or commercial diving, like whatever you want to do. And so for me, through my, through my photos, I hope to show people that we can coexist with these animals without the need of fear. Like you definitely have, to have the need of respect and understanding the animals. You're not just gonna go in the water doing like crazy things and think, okay, these sharks are completely harmless and they will never do any, or they never could do anything to me. Sharks are capable of, they're apex predators. They are, they are capable of inflicting damage, but is the, if it's their desire to is the question, which is for us humans, if we're just swimming around, it's basically not. Like they, they have no interest in eating us or hunting us down or killing us. Like how it would seem in movies with like Jaws and stuff where the shark is like hunting down the boat and it's following the boat to try to get this one guy and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't really work like that. So through my photos, I try to show people that you can interact with these animals. You can get close to these animals. I also to show them why these animals are actually important what the benefits to having the diversity of sharks in the world and also in the Bahamas benefits, whether it be the balance of the ecosystem where sharks are the apex predators, they eat dead and dying fish, they get rid of all the sick fish so that their natural selection can happen and healthier fish can thrive. Um, they clean up the ocean. It's like the garbage collecting crew of the ocean too. Like if we didn't have people to pick up our trash that we always seem to drop over the place, we'll be like swimming in trash right now and like on, on land. Mm -hmm. And so I also just also the economic side of it for shark diving. Shark diving brings a lot of money to different countries that um, do that kind of thing or ecotourism. And so, and because people come from all over the world to see these animals and that brings livelihoods to people, which then benefits the economy, which then benefits basically everybody. Oh, exactly. And, you know, your photography definitely helps educate people on that. And uh, also with, you know, the Bahamas, in the Caribbean area, the Bahamas has one of the healthier concentrations of sharks uh, that, that I've seen. I've been to Cuba and there's a lot there as well. But you'll go to some places, um, you know, I go to Bonaire a lot. You don't really see a lot of sharks. Um, so what is the, the Bahamian government doing something for conservation and protection of the sharks? Um, what, what are they doing uh, science-wise and protection-wise? So here in the Bahamas, the Bahamas oh, is a, thank you. The Bahamas is a shark sanctuary. So the Bahamas government made it illegal for shark fishing activity to happen in the Bahamas. So no catching of sharks, no filling of sharks. And I'm super stoked about that. Yeah. That happened a few years ago. So sharks are protected here in the Bahamas means that they are able to thrive and live like how they're supposed to. And I personally noticed like as a, as a free diver, as a scuba diver, as a spear fisherman, spear fisherman specifically, I've personally noticed that the more places that I've gone where there are more sharks, there were, I would say, 85% of the time, there are more fish in those same areas. So more sharks to area, that means there are more fish. And I just see that as like visual proof that the more balance an ecosystem is where it has all of the predators or the prey that's supposed to be there, it just makes everything like a lot more healthy opposed to going to a spot where there's absolutely no sharks. There's usually a lot less fish and there's usually a lot less everything like coral life and everything. And so 
I think it was a really good move on the Bahamas um, government because fishing is the third largest industry in, there's the second largest industry in the Bahamas and tourism is first. And tourism for us are here brings shark divers. Shark divers are tourists. Scuba divers are tourists. Um, beachgoers are tourists. And most of the attractions, a lot of the attractions involve seeing or swimming with sharks. So it's, it's amazing. Well, that, that's great. I mean, it's a very successful program. And as you pointed out, sharks are worth a lot more alive uh, than they are dead. And, and the yeah. Bahamas are a great example of that. Um, so you, you've worked on a lot of different projects over the years. I mentioned some of the, the TV projects you've worked on and photo projects. Um, there was a really cool campaign that you did, uh, I think, last year um, where instead of taking photos, you are actually the subject of the photos, I believe. Yeah. And uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that campaign and what, what the purpose of and uh, some of the charities it supported. Yeah, so that campaign um, I did last year was, was with a community charity group called Kamagawa, and they did a collaboration with a UK clothing company called Represent, and they... They reached out to me to do a photo campaign for a new line of clothing that they were putting out, which is basically this white, um, this white sweatshirt and sweatpants. This is the image here, and the pants also. And they were going to carry this to um, it's a it's like a conference, international conference thing that happens every year called Complex Con where a lot of like big um, clothing brands release their new stuff or limited edition stuff and all that kind of stuff. And the proceeds for selling these products, they were donating to Lion and Shark Charities. And so they wanted to capture and create images um, to promote this clothing, to promote the clothing and promote the products for them to spread the word and share the word that, hey, this is what we're releasing. This is for a cause and it's trying to create content that people would really be reactive to and really grab their attention to, to see. So that's kind of like was the goal for this shoot to get really iconic images where people would, if they see it on social media, which is a lot of the target for them, they see it on social media, they'll stop and they'll click it and be like, Hey, what is this? Yeah. And why is this? And so they'll feel more inclined to actually help purchase it, support it, whether it be purchasing the actual product or checking out Karmagawa or checking out the charities. It's just overall benefits for everyone. Well, what I like about <laughs> these images, you, you see them, and at first you're like, oh, that's a really cool image, and you're like, wait a minute, wow, look at this one. It's like he's underwater, you know, and then it, so it, it really gets the viewer thinking. So I could see from a marketing campaign this would be very successful, and hopefully they've sold a lot of these. I. I'd love to get my hands on some. <laughs> um, so uh, let me let me ask you what what charities uh, benefited from this project? Oh wow, you're on a bicycle. So the charities that benefited from this are um, I can't remember the exact name, but it's a lion charity based in South Africa because okay. the charities that they're giving to a shark and lion. Um, there was another sweatshirt, a part of the the campaign that had like a lion on it and that one was done by uh, that photo campaign was done by another photographer in south africa and i i think they shot with like african wildlife and all that kind of stuff and then our part what like my part was the sharks so obviously trying to do it on the water and all that kind of stuff and the other shark charity was sharks for kids and sharks for kids was the charity that i recommended to um, the guys at Karma Gawa to d donate to for that. So I, like, they asked me, like, hey, who would you recommend that, like, which charities or community groups that you would recommend who's doing like, impactful things for sharks? And I knew of Shark for Kids, obviously. I do a lot of work in the Bahamas, which is really aligned with what the whole purpose of what I do is, like, giving back to my country and, like, educating the youth of the Bahamas of what they can do, like in the marine field with sharks, with animals on the water. So it, it really worked out. And I was, I was really happy. I was able to use um, my talent or ability with the photography and also being comfortable underwater. Um, 
obviously again, enjoying doing fun slash dangerous things underwater for a cause. Yeah, no, it's that's great, and we're getting some some questions and feedback, you know, just of how amazing these these photographs are and your work. And you know, a question we've gotten from a couple of people actually is is how do you hold your breath that long, and how how long? Because I'm a free diver as well, and I'm just, I'm blown away by these because uh, you're so natural under there, no fins, no anything. How um, how long can you hold your breath, and how do you how hard is it, and how do you build up your uh, your stamina for underwater? Yeah. So it's developed over time. Freediving is, you kind of think of it as a muscle. The more you work it out, the, more, the better you get. And so for me, the longest I've held my breath, and I, I honestly don't do like max breath holes that often as I maybe should, um, but it's, it's not that entertaining for me just to go to, for like max breath hole. I think the longest I held my breath was like three minutes, 30 seconds or something like that. And that's just like laying on the floor in my room, completely relaxed, like eyes closed, trying to hold my breath for as long as I can. But for, for diving, whenever I am free diving or shooting photos underwater or spearfishing, I'm usually underwater for between 40 seconds to a minute 20. Uh, you're, I you're usually never need and, to go yeah, you're moving and extending yeah. energy. And, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's like you're, you're diving down. Well, you're at the surface for one. Usually, like, there's some waves, so you're trying to keep your body steady. And, you know, you're using muscles to go down. And then you have to do whatever you're doing underwater, which usually requires moving around or, in this case, like, getting into position for the shots and... So you're using a lot of energy. The more muscles you use, the more oxygen you burn, and then you need to come up. So it takes practice. It takes a lot of experience. It takes being really comfortable on the water, and it takes being able to enjoy it too. Like when the carbon dioxide in your body, carbon dioxide will build up in your body as your oxygen levels are used up. And the carbon dioxide is usually the uncomfortable feeling that we would feel when we feel like we're about to be out of air. So it's kind of just getting adapted to knowing your body and knowing how you can or should react to the way your body feels and enjoying it underwater, basically. Like anybody who, who's interested in getting into freediving, I definitely recommend doing a freediving course because the more you understand the feelings that's happening inside your body, the more you are aware of it and you're mentally able to push past a certain point. Freediving is like way more mental than it is physical, like 100%. No, I completely agree. And there's, you know, we would do a lot of yoga and get in contact with your breath. And you really, you really have to fight off initially, particularly, uh, not really fight, but you have to learn to accept those feelings that get in your head about, oh my gosh, I have to go to the surface. Exactly. And, uh, it's not because you're out of the oxygen, as you pointed out because you're, you're building up carbon dioxide, but you, you look so natural in the, in these images. And, and someone did ask, you know, do you offer, I know you're a scuba diving instructor. Do you offer free diving lessons or um, is that something also that you do? Yeah. I personally don't offer free diving um, classes or instruction just because I don't find that much interest in the teaching side of, yeah. courses so like i have my scuba diving instructor certification but i don't really teach also i don't often have time to teach but i do know scuba diving instructors who do teach who are really good good friends of mine and also same for free diving instructors so anybody right. who's curious to knowing just let me know i know for me some of the some of the best yeah no definitely uh people reach out to him through his website his instagram account um and, uh, you know, if you have questions of who, and it sounds like he can hook you up in the Bahamas, and I may come out. Uh, it's been a while since I've been in the water this year. I might have to come out and get a refresher. <laughs> yeah, you got to come. No, I definitely do, and uh, definitely want to do that. So, you know, another question, um, you know, I've been getting, and oh, this one's really cool. This one reminds me of the superhero. I almost used it in the intro just because it looks like you're, you're pushing this this ship up. You always see, you know, Superman grabbing the airplane out of the air yeah. and, and safely landing it. And here you are uh, manhandling this ship. Uh, it's a really cool perspective. Thanks. Black and white is definitely just powerful in this image. Um, 
So what type of camera gear? I don't know if, if you have any images of your gear or some gear that you can show the kids online, but um, you know, what, there's curiosity about what the camera gear is. They saw a picture uh, before underwater. Oh, very cool. So what are we looking at here? So to the, um, I think to the left uh -huh. is, is the one with the purple, with the purple video lights. This is my camera equipment I usually use whenever, well, this is the camera equipment I, I use most of the time whenever I am on underwater photo shoots, underwater film jobs, um, I'm traveling. This is usually the equipment that I would use in any of the work that you see out there right now um, that I've done. And I have, I actually have some of the equipment here just in a kind of different setup so they may look different. So from the left, the one with the purple lights and the like the little TV screen on top, that's my main video camera, which is this camera here. So this will go inside that big thing. And I'll be able basically to be controlling all the settings that I have on this entire camera um, inside that, but underwater. So the equipment okay. there is um, all Nauticam equipment for the housings at least. Nauticam is the brand of the underwater equipment. And that is the same thing. It's the same thing here. It's, it's heavy. Bed, I can tell it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's got, it's like, it's about like 25 to 30 pounds out of, out of the water, but underwater it floats depends on how you have it set up. So this is the same thing here with the purple lights. I just don't have the arms on it. So I don't have it screwed on and I don't have the external monitor on top right now. But the camera I just showed here, this camera here will go inside here. Um, and then I'll be able to control everything I do. This is the camera I usually use for um, film jobs. This is a Canon 1DX Mark II. And okay. the lens I have on that camera now is a macro lens, but this is a, a different port for it. So for underwater equipment, every time you, you if you have a camera like this, where these two detach, like for professional DSLRs, these two separate like this. So this is the lens, this is the body of the camera. The setup that you have on your housing here from this part forward would be different depending on what lens you have. So it's not like um, one fits all situation. Like I wish it was, but that's not, that's not how it was. So just like how I separated the lens and the body, that's how it would be here. And you piece these pieces together, almost like Lego, to build the setup that you want. And each piece has a different part. So this black piece here would disconnect from this dome. There's like a little ring here that would disconnect from this bigger part, um, all that kind of stuff. So you, you're kind of like building together a package for yeah, what yeah. you want. And also based on whatever camera you use, would it would affect what dome you can use or what extension you can use or what housing you can use. So um, for the other setup is my main photography setup, which is the Canon 5D Mark IV, which is a little bit smaller than the 1DX. So this is the 1DX I use mainly for video. Most of my video stuff, you can see it from the size difference. And this is the 5D Mark IV, this one here. The 5D Mark IV for me is a lot better for photo capabilities and it's the one I use most often for my photography if, unless I have, I need a camera that can do both. Um, it, can, it can do good video too, same thing for the 1DX. The 1DX camera can still shoot photos underwater, um, but I mainly use it for video. But I also use it for photography since I don't want to carry both of the equipment around at the same time. And the things that I, oh, the thing I forgot to mention on the 1DX, or the, the purple things I have there are the attached to the side are underwater video lights. So they're, they're really bright lights. I actually have them right here. They're really bright lights like these. And the battery will go inside here. This one's are the Keldon 8X, um, yeah, 8X lights. Um, I had them for a few years now. Pretty good, really bright. I wouldn't turn it on now because it'd be like really, really bright. Uh, especially since they're underwater equipment, they, may, they can overheat if you have them on high power above water. But underwater, having two of these shining on your subjects just for additional lighting. Um, if it's daylight, it's great. If it's a night dive, 
absolutely perfect. You'll never get lost once you have these underwater on a night dive. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. And at the same time, you may, you may have a lot of divers complaining that it's too bright where it looks like day. No, it's, I, I know what you mean. So this is some pretty impressive gear that you have. And then you mentioned GoPro earlier on the other end of the spectrum. So for people getting started off or even, even now, I, I'll have a GoPro sometimes on my oh, yeah. photo rig attached to it. I always have a GoPro. Um, so those are great. There's a lot of different brands of small cameras, Olympus. Um, so there's, you know, Andre's doing some pretty professional stuff here, but there's all yeah. sizes of cameras um, for, for your different entry level as well. Exactly. Um, so uh, don't, don't get too scared by the 20, 25 pounders and all of this, but this is some serious gear, but that's how he can get some of these images when he needs to get them um, yeah. for an assignment. So that's, that's a good uh, good example, and uh, thank you for for showing us some of that and explaining. That was we've got quite a few quite a few uh, questions on that. Um, so I did get a uh, a question, and maybe you can go back to some of your photos about um, you know these these shark encounters that you've had. You know, is there a particular um, encounter or um, you know, what's the most challenging photo shoot you've ever had to do, whether it be a shark or maybe it was a model that wasn't cooperative, but um, what's the most challenging photo shoot you've had to photograph? So the most challenging, I, I, don't, even, I don't think I have it here, but I can, I can get it for you. Yeah, no worries. The, can you put you on the spot here? <laughs> no, it, it's fine. I, I try to keep my my stuff's somewhat organized. Again, oh, I can tell you're very organized with your images. So what I would consider to be the most, one of the most challenging shoots that I've done underwater, just because it was logistically challenging, like how, how are we going to do this kind of thing, was this photo I did here with my friend, um, David Langua. This is the same guy from the, the right. Eden Ray photo. Um, and probably a lot of the other photos that you're going to see with a guy underwater because we shoot together often. And this photo here is like, just to start off, is not Photoshop. This photo and none of, none of my photos you would find in Photoshop. Everything you see there is what was shot in camera. There may be a little bit of removal of bubbles or um, some, maybe like some random tourists at the surface kind of thing but there's never stuff added to the photo. So this shark is here and this guy is actually skate, well, skateboarding underwater. And this was a photo shoot that we did um, recreationally. So it wasn't for a job, it wasn't for a client. It was just a creative project that we wanted to do together. Cause then I, it was an idea that we had thought of like, hey, this would be cool to do underwater. And then from there we kind of executed it. So the story behind this shot and I think like this was also back in 2000, the early 2018. This is probably one of the most fun, but also definitely the most difficult shoot that I ever did because we made it difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so on this shoot, um, it was me and it was David. And we use scuba equipment for that, for this, just, just to put it out there. We use scuba equipment for this, but I was the photographer, obviously. David was the underwater model. David was his safety diver, his own safety diver. I was David's safety diver also, and I was also shark handler. So I had the, we carried bait underwater. And so it was a pretty fun shoot to do that. Just to put it out there, don't try this at home. I don't <laughs> recommend anybody to try this without proper experience, proper guy, proper people. And there are few people in the world that I would ever do this kind of photo shoot with, I, 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 like what we did. And David's one of them where we've dove with sharks for a very long time, whether it be reef sharks or nurse sharks, um, free diving to feed tiger sharks and hammerhead sharks. Um, all over the world. So David and I are really comfortable working underwater together, whether it be free diving, whether it be scuba diving, um, even above water, whether it be sailing across the Bahamas. Like we have a lot of time um, 
working together and knowing each, how each other reacts in certain situations. So that's why we felt confident enough that we can do this shoot, execute it, do it well, do it safely, which we did. And so the concept was David would do a hand plan underwater um, on a skateboard. This skateboard no longer works anymore because it's corroded. <laughs> and shoot it with sharks around. So get it where we shoot it enough times where um, we get a cool shark come into, in the, into the position and capture the image. And so in between takes where you would go down on scuba gear, I'll have scuba gear on, David had a scuba tank nearby. And in between takes, David would breathe from the regulator, take a few breaths, take a few breaths, push it away, then go into position, do the handstand. I'll be snapping away, snapping, 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 waiting for a shark to get into the right position. And then when he's almost out of air, he'll come back down. I'll give him a regulator. And we'll basically do that for, we did that about six or seven times. And we were able to execute this photo in one dive, which is like one scuba dive. Um, a total of about 45 minutes, which is also probably one of the shortest photo shoots that I've ever done. Yeah, and we, we were pretty excited about it where we thought, we were well aware that we're probably going to have to do this on like two, three dives, but we were able to get it on the first dive, which was amazing. And it was a lot of fun. And we, I also got a, a video of this too, because a lot of time, whenever I shoot, or especially if I shoot these crazy things with David, people automatically think, oh, this is Photoshop. Like 100% right, right. this is Photoshop, it isn't real. And it's the reason why for a lot, most of my shoots and stuff that I do, I would shoot video of it too. Kind of as like proof. <laughs> yeah, I watched, like proof I, I watched that video. I'm glad you uh, are gonna show that because it's, it's pretty neat behind the scenes of what goes into a shot like that. And, yeah. and, and it's amazing that it was just the two of you because I've been part of those type of shoots and usually there'll be a couple extra uh, safety divers or people there, or, uh, you know, it was pretty amazing. You were able to do that just the two of you. Yeah, it was, it, it was a lot of fun, but we, we were really like, we had to be really focused on everything. So we were really like black and white, make sure like, do your safety stop? watch your hands, wait for my signal, listen out for me. Um, if anything goes wrong, like we call it, we go up and we're really strict about it all. Um, so I'm just gonna try to pull up this video and so I can find it. And yeah, so I'll just skip to the part here. Yeah, and definitely video. go check out his website. He's got some amazing uh, videos, uh, footage on his website. Here you go. Wow. Look at all the it. So this is uh, this is the, my showreel from last year, but the clip coming up is the one with David doing the hands time and like in real time. So this is the shot here that we're able to do. You see the shot swimming around. Him holding the handstand, there's the boat at the surface, and yeah, it was it was a lot of it was a lot of fun to do. And for this video, I, like when you're dealing with wild animals, especially sharks, you can't control where they're gonna swim. You can't control, like, you can't direct the shark to be like, okay, Mr. Shark, look, we're gonna need you to swim to the left and be like a few inches off from this way, and blah blah blah. You have to kind of just shoot until you get it. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Now, is this the video of Free Diver Life for me, or is that a different video? Um, that's a different video. Okay. So that, that video one, is just my showreel. Um, okay. Free Life for me, I have on my YouTube channel. Has, yeah, definitely. I, I wanted to recommend to people because there's, there's so much of his work, and he's only been able to show a little bit of it. But definitely go check out uh, on, on YouTube if you just search Free Diver Life for me or go to his YouTube channel. You'll see it. It, it pops right up. And it's an amazing video. And if you want to learn more about free diving, it'll show you what's possible free diving. And he makes it look so effortlessly, him, him and his models. But it, it really is a beautiful, well done video. So I encourage you to, to, to check that out. So I, I did have a, a question too about uh, the sharks. And, and we, we do get these questions uh, whenever we show these type of photos. But, you know, ha have you ever had any of the sharks be aggressive or have you ever gotten bitten by a shark? Uh, no, I haven't. I've 
haven't had any sharks for me personally showing aggression on a photo shoot. I have had sharks show aggression when I was spearfishing, but that's kind of part of the game. And it's kind of obvious because we have dead fish in our hand in the ocean where sharks live, where we're just visiting. And so the shark is attracted to the dead fish, but I've never been bitten by a shark in, in that sense. Um, to this day, and I'm trying to keep that reputation. Okay. I'm trying to keep that uh, a trend. And that's simply because we take, we slash I take the necessary safety precautions and also I educate myself on the subject that I'm shooting, whether it be the sharks and the people. So I, I don't just jump in the water with, when I, when I do photo shoots like these, I don't just jump in the water with just random people who I don't know how they die, I don't know anything about them. Most of the time and most of the work that I would do where the, with the recreational work, I guess you can say, whereas the um, underwater creative stuff on my website are this, this, my portfolio that I shoot with my friends. When it comes to jobs and stuff, you don't really have a choice of who you dive with. Sometimes I can recommend the people I work with. Um, sometimes it has no people at all, which is also cool. Um, but for, for like these photos I have here, which are um, photos I've shot recreationally, this guy here is the same person from the skateboard video, David, same person here, same person here. And it's just because I, I want to be able to be comfortable in the water, shooting what I would like to shoot and the concept that I would like to create and not have to worry about the other person's safety. As in like, you're, you're always aware of the other person's safety, but not to the point where I'm, I am thinking, oh, David's not as skilled as a diver as he should be or... I'm not sure if David will be able to blah, blah, blah. I, I don't want to have that second thought, especially when I have to watch my own back of what's going on. So and when we're in the water, we're a team, and he's watching my back, I'm watching his back. And it's the same thing for whoever else I may be diving with with sharks. Yeah. And oh, that's a gorgeous This hair uh, is in yeah. Bimini. Um, uh, a trip I did last year, and I did a video about this trip too. Um, it's called the Bimini Story. And we went there for two days and we had a short weather window to go dive with the great hammerhead sharks of Bimini. And that was an amazing trip. We were able to dive with Jillian and Duncan. And we went to the guys down at Neil Watson. We did dolphins. We did these guys. And it was a, it was an amazing day, epic day. Um, but I have the photo I have here. Um, this is one here with a tiger beach famous diving spot in the Bahamas named for huge tiger sharks and this photo with Sofia Gomez she's a Colombian um, champion freediver she is the deepest depth of anybody in Colombia to freedive which is like 300 plus feet which is like 100 wow. plus meters or something like that and we did, we did a trip to Tiger Beach to freedive with these guys and to Go around to the question that you mentioned about sharing aggression or inter like close encounters with a shark. Here is an image of my friend Steph. It's the same lady from the yellow dress photo. Free diving with one of the tiger sharks down in Bimini. And in this photo, most people will look at it and say like, oh, the shark's trying to attack her or the shark is about to bite her. It's not necessarily the case. This image here is actually um, how sharks are able, one of the ways sharks are able to identify what something is. So we have hands, so we can touch things and grab things and be like, okay, this is a camera, I can hold it, I can feel it, even if my eyes are closed. This is a mouse, I can feel it and feel it, feel it with my, even if my eyes are closed. With sharks, they don't have hands. They can touch things with like their flippers and figure out what it is. They use their mouths and they use their noses and their senses and their eyes obviously to figure out what things are so if sharks usually would bump things with their noses where they'd just be swimming bumping it to figure out what it is because they can smell it they can feel it they can sense the electrical signals and they also do it by biting it if they bite something like the difference between biting a fish or biting a trash can they would know that okay the fish is a lot more appetizing than a trash can <laughs> And yeah. so it's, it's the only way for them to figure out is if they, if they do that. So in this photo here, we were just at the surface and this, the shark, um, like a juvenile tiger shark is about 
10 to 11 feet. It was just cruising there, not showing any aggression at all. We were in the water in a place that we were baiting for these sharks. So it's not just like we're going out in the random ocean and instantly a shark shows up. Like we're going to places where we know are shark hotspots and we're baiting them there because we are there to dive with the sharks and take photos, content with them, um, enjoy the moment with them and all that kind of stuff. And so the shark is coming up here just to check out Stephanie and she dove down to it to basically redirect the shark, which is just putting its hands on its nose. And I, as I said, again, I don't recommend any, don't try this at home without an experienced guide or without having the proper experience because this is dangerous stuff here. And in this photo, Steph has experience with sharks, free diving. She's a free diving instructor, super comfortable underwater, has done this before. Um, we were the proper team, safety crew and all that kind of stuff. And she just dove down push off, push the shark um, nose off to the side and the shark realized that, okay, this is, this is not food because this thing can defend itself and I don't need to be concerned. So it, it came up pretty slowly at the surface. Steph had time to push it away. And once it realized that, okay, this isn't like a marine animal or a fish that I want to eat, it just swam right back down and went cruising about its way. Super oh, that's, commonly. That's pretty, pretty cool. I've got time where we're just, we're a little bit over, but there's one more question just wanted to ask. I know you've been diving a lot in the Bahamas. You mentioned Indonesia, Mexico. Um, any other place that's on top of your list that you want to go diving? And is there a particular species of shark that you really want to see that you haven't photographed yet? Uh, yeah, so the place that I would like to go, like on my bucket list to dive, would be Raja Ampat in Indonesia. Is known for really healthy coral, um, a lot of marine life. If you watch Blue Planet 2 or Planet Earth series, they shoot there often when they show the wide scapes of coral. Um, and species of shark that I would love to dive with that I still haven't done yet, I hope to do soon, would be the great white shark. Oh. So I hope to free dive with them soon somehow and film film with them also because I, it's it's – Basically, it's the shark, and people think, okay, what's the biggest, baddest, coolest shark in the ocean? They think great white shark. And even despite that, for me, I want to do it because it's a large shark that I haven't been able to dive with and learn about. And it's what people view as the typical Jaws. So showing people that Jaws isn't really Jaws is kind of like on my to-do list also that I love to do. Oh, that's great. And, and it's one of the most studied sharks. And it's, it's a great um, shark to swim. Not I haven't swam with it, but um, to photograph. And actually, Sharks for Kids has a, a great white trip to Guadalupe next uh, nice. next year. So you'll have to, to talk to Duncan and Jillian about, yeah. uh, about hooking you up. I um, yeah. just wanted to thank you from Sharks for Kids. And, you know, we, we sort of built this as a photography with, with Andre, but you've taught us so much about free diving, uh, scuba diving, your camera gear, um, and then sharks themselves. We've learned a lot about sharks today. So I really appreciate all of the education that you've given all the kids and everything. And uh, if anyone does want to reach out to Andre, by all means, um, go to his website, uh, andremusgrove.com. Uh, uh, follow him on Instagram at M Andre Musgrove. Um, any other contacts you want to give? Uh, those are the main things. Okay. If, if, you search, um, if you search my name on YouTube or anywhere, I usually have everything under the same name. So. Great, great. No, again, thank you so much. We really appreciate it today. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hopefully, I'll get a chance in the near future to come down and uh, go diving with you. Yeah, and Bimini with the great shark, the great Ahmed. I would love to. It's been a while since I've been in the Bahamas, so that would be be amazing. Um, so real quick, just to wrap up, I just wanted to show the Sharks for Kids website for those of you who haven't been there. Um, let me just share my screen real quick. So uh, here you can see we're on the webinars page. So this may have been how you got to today's uh, webinar, but if you go to our homepage, and just take a look here. Uh, you can see um, these menus across the top have a lot of information um, about Sharks for Kids. So you can learn about the Shark Ambassadors, which I'm part of that program. Um, you can learn about different ways to get involved. And then under education, the webinars, we also have virtual reality 360 degree shark dives, which are cool. So if you've never been shark diving or you wanna go, uh, do a virtual dive. It's pretty cool. And for those of you who watch this webinar, 
you qualify for the certificates, you can go and get certificates for the webinars that you watch. So that's sort of a nice way to reward yourself and uh, show your teachers and your family uh, how much you care about sharks. And then we have a lot of uh, information about our outreach programs to schools. Uh, most of them of late have been virtual lessons. Um, but for any teachers or parents out there that want curriculum and activities and crafts for kids at home, there's a lot of information on here. And then we have a special menu for the kids as well. There's fact sheets on here, so you can go in here and uh, pull up whatever your favorite shark is. Um, maybe it's a bull shark, which I know there's a lot of bull sharks down in uh, the Bahamas. It's got interesting information about bull sharks for you, um, so you can do projects with those as well. So a lot of information out there, and if you want to um, reach anyone at Sharks for Kids, uh, there is a, a way to contact us. Um, also, we have a blog. You can follow our blog, and myself and other uh, scientists and shark ambassadors will, will put information on here um, about sharks and, and what's going on in the world. So again, wanted to thank everyone for joining today and particularly thank our very special guest, Andre. Um, any uh, parting words you want to say to the kids out there? Uh, well, thanks for tuning in. And it's really cool that you guys are involved with Sharks for Kids because it's it's like a different world that's a lot more exciting than being on land, <laughs> in my opinion. So it's a good choice. Um, if you're looking to get into the marine field, Definitely check out the stuff Ron mentioned where it gives you a lot of information that like for me when I was younger, we didn't have, we didn't even know was out there. So it's a really good resource to take advantage of if you are interested in the marine field and sharks and that kind of stuff. So um, just follow your dreams and do what makes you happy. Good, good advice, good advice. All right, well with that, we'll sign off for uh, Sharks for Kids Shark Talk today.